Hi everybody, Kathy here from Paper and Lace Princess and welcome back to part two of our little flip style mini to go into our little altered box. Okay, so in this tutorial we're actually looking at doing the mini um, and all the assembly for that. So I've gone ahead, I've got everything ready that we will need. So get your pencils out so you can take down some um, notes and measurements and what have you. But before we do that, what I thought I'd like to do is just show you one that I've done earlier so you've got a bit of an idea on what it is, well, what the little flip album is going to look like. Now this one is slightly different. This one I used to teach, um, actually I taught it quite a bit when I had my scrapbooking store. And look, it always went down with, you know, everybody loving what they had created because it is slightly different. Um, now this case is different. It's a little CD case that we've altered for our little um, album, but they're not quite as readily available today as what our other little boxes are. These are, you know, you can get these everywhere. So this is the one we're using for the little album that we're doing today. But this is the kind of style album that will be going inside of it. So as you can see, it's a little circle and it just flips open like so. It's got lots of little tags and embellishments and what have you in it. When you get to the end, you just begin again and that gives you the underside of the album. Or you can just open it up as a big concertina like so. So that's the sort of style we'll be doing. It is a little flip album, as I said. Um, tons of fun. You can do lots of different little things with these. And they're fantastic if you've got some paper that you just can't bear to throw away, but you don't really have enough to make anything out, out of it. These are great. As you can see with this one, I've just used bits of absolutely everything. And yet it comes together beautifully. So just keep that in mind when you're wanting to use your um, saved up papers. Okay, so for this little album, I'm going to do five pages. So that means I will need ten circles cut in total. One for the front and one for the back. Now this is going to give the page a lot of strength. Because it is so small, um, and if you're like me and you like to embellish quite a lot, then you need to have some weight here that's going to hold and support everything that you put into the album. Okay, so we need those. Now, just keep in mind that the size you use must fit inside your little box that you've done. The other thing that we will need is, and this is purely optional too, I might, might say, but I've gone ahead and I've cut out some pattern paper so that when I have assembled my little album, I can go back and pop on my, my pattern paper like so. So I will have a piece on the front and a piece on the back. Okay. So the other thing we will need for the assembly are the little hinges. Now, I've made these with quite a bit of depth. The reason for that is, I'll show you this one here, I've got it half prepped. You can see here, the hinge comes right in onto that page. And as I said earlier, this is the only thing that's holding this whole thing together. It's taking quite a lot of weight. And through making a lot of these, I have found that if you leave this um, hinge that little bit longer, it does support the album a lot better. And by doing that, this is why I come back in with my second piece, so I can cover up those hinges. So I do all the hinges on one side, so they're all on one side, so that it's just easier when it comes to assembling. And then we can just glue down the tops pop on our in, um, in, um, patterned paper and there we go. So that's really giving it, you know, a lot of support and that's what we really do need. If you wanted, I have actually made these 
and before I've popped on the, the top part I've just put on a little bit of this um, decorative tape, the wishy tape and just run that across and that really strengthens up those hinges um, but I'm not going to do that today but if you are going to, you think it's going to you know, be used quite a bit that might be worth considering Okay, so that folds up. The other thing that's slightly different is you can see I've got a little cover or a front or a back cover on this one. Now this is purely optional. You don't need to put a cover on, on them at all. The one I just showed you has no cover whatsoever. But I just thought for this one I would like to do a little cover. And I was just fortunate enough that, here's the other one here, so you can see what I'm using is a coaster. So I picked these ones up. Actually, I was in Hobart on a holiday with a friend and um, we are out for dinner and I noticed the coasters were round and I was looking and I thought, oh, I could do something with those. So I asked the guy if I could take a couple and he looked at me kind of strange and gave me a few and thought, what is this girl on coasters for? But this is what I wanted it for. It's worked out perfect. The size is just perfect. And the weight is great. So, you know, they do make great little covers for your minis. So, there's another little tip for you. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you is what I've done to, I've made some little pockets here. And I'm just really happy with how that's going to look. So we'll just um, glue around the edge and that's giving us this lovely little pocket here to slip some little tags or whatever we like in there. And how I've done that, what I've done is I've looked at all this leftover paper that I've had after cutting out my patterns here with my little scalloped edge and I thought you know, it wasn't enough for another another one whole whole piece. So what I've actually done is I've gone back with turn it this way, you might be able to see it a bit better. I've gone back with the same die. I've just laid it down so that I'm happy with the depth for a pocket just here and I've run it through the Big Shot again and that's giving me the exact same shape all around the bottom as you can see so that's going to fit my pattern paper beautifully and on this one here I've just gone in and I ran a round die just on the edge like so with these ones here I've left them as a scallop and I'm not sure, I really think probably running it through with that rounded edge would be better even though this looks great. I'm concerned maybe the tags might get caught on those little pieces. So perhaps I'll just run these through again and round them all. But that was a good way to use up some of these pieces and it's, it's all coordinating. Okay, so I've also I've inked around the edges of all of these so it's all ready to assemble. And I've gone ahead with these tabs, and I'm not sure if I said they are uh, three quarters of an inch wide, and they're one and three quarters long. Uh, you could cut it at two inches if you wanted. That's that's not a problem, but I wouldn't go under one and three quarters. Okay, and then we just need to score that in half and give that a good. Burnish. Make sure that that fold line is nice and creased. And you also want to make sure you can fold it the other way. This is just going to help soften all those fibres in the in the cardstock, so that when we go to flip our album either way, it's it's, it's already got that give in that little crease there. Okay. So what we will do, we'll grab our, our album here that I've already started just to save on time and I will pop on another one of these little pages. Now I am attaching these with score tape. So I'll grab my score tape and I want to run it along the edge here and it, at least give it two, two widths of tape. Sorry guys, I hope I'm not going out of frame here. And we'll do that to both of these ends here. Okay, 
once again I think I have mentioned to you in my other videos I do like to use score tape when I'm assembling things anything that's going to that needs that extra strength I do use the score tape because it is very very strong I'm assured it's not going to come apart okay give that a good burnish and we will remove two pieces now we can see by our other bits here our other hinges here that it needs to be on this side so to line it up it's quite easy to just fold your pages over fold that tab we've got that one side with the sticky and we're going to line it not with the cover one the cover one will be slightly different it will come out slightly further so on the last page facing out this way we just want to line that hinge up exactly with the last hinge. I hope you can see there what I'm doing. So I can see that I have lined up this hinge with the previous one on that side. Okay? Score that down. Now we will remove the tape from this other side. And all we will do is line up our page with the page that is directly beneath it. And just open that up and give that a little give that a little rub down. So we can see they're all going to line up beautifully. And we just keep on repeating that process until we have the required amount of pages. So I've got um, my five that I'm going to use. So I will go ahead and attach my cover. Now my cover needs to be attached, needs to be covered on one side and already I have my hinge already attached here. And that is before I lay out my um, backing paper on that. So I just need to fold this all up. I do need to put the tape. Sorry guys, sometimes I just have to visually see things. I have to see it before I, I know where I'm going. Okay, I've got a little bit of tape there left. I'm not going to waste that. I'll just pop that on there. As long as the tape doesn't go up to that um, fold line, you're fine. remove those so I already know that it does have to go on this side one does come out slightly away from the page just so that when you close that up the cover is just out from the pages within. Okay, so make sure we do give that a really good score down on both sides. Take your time doing this. It can be a little bit confusing when you're doing covers for these to make sure that you've got the right side wear. And it also would be a lot easier if you had six pages and not five, like I have. Trust me to do it the hard way. Um, because what's going to happen is that's going to give you that, how these are coming up. You have another point, pink pink coming up and that would make it a lot easier for you to line up. Okay, so I probably would suggest that you do do at least six pages. Okay, 
So what I might do now, so it can be drying while I'm, I'm fiddling around doing the other bits, is I might put the other cover piece on this here. Here's some of my glue mix that I've got. <coughs> and because I want this to adhere all the way around, right up to those edges and it is a circle so it is hard to do this with tape and get you know get it right to the edge hence I'll use the glue the wet glue um, any good quality PVA glue would be fine and I have mentioned before I actually make up my own mix and I learned to do that when I had my store I'm a very clever I'm a decoupage artist and they shared their recipe with me and I have been using that ever since and it is just the best glue ever and I will share that recipe as I said. Now if you've got that excess glue coming around that edge that is actually really good because what you can do is rub that right around onto that edge that really will seal that paper. Okay, now I'm not going to trim that until it has totally dried. Okay, and just remove some of the excess bulk just so it's easier to turn this around. Okay, so that can just dry. Okay, so let's have a look at doing uh, matting up these now. We're going, we've got all our hinges facing us. So what we will do is we'll go ahead and we will adhere down um, these top pieces. So you could use some tape in the middle, you don't have to use wet glue all the way around. So that's what I might do is just pop in some school tape in the middle. is just run a bead make sure I'm in camera here just run a bead of glue around the edge here and if you have a brush it's probably a good good thing Making sure I've got that glue all over and around that hinge because we really really want this um, this next page that we're going to glue on we really <coughs> <coughs> excuse me we really want it to adhere down right over that hinge the better the adhesion, the stronger the page will be. That's beautiful. Don't worry about that little bit of glue that's coming out the side. That's good because it's showing us that it is right up to that edge. When we come back in ink around here, that will all be covered up. So I'll go ahead, I'll do this one here. Again, getting that hinge totally covered. Down. 
here's my croaky voice in my clearing of my throat guys I've been fighting some little cold for some days now it's not really doing anything but it's not going away either <laughs> two there I wonder why that was lifting so once again pushing that making sure that that is really adhered down to that hinge Move that over here. Okay. So there you can see that cupboard and <clears throat> the back view as well. Okay, so we'll go ahead, we will do that to all of our pages and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so now we're, we're back. We've got all of our pages assembled, both front and back, all nice and dry. And the other thing that I've done is I've cut around as close as I possibly could with my scissors with that cover. As you remember, I was letting it dry. So I've trimmed that as close as I could. Then I've gone around with a file and just filed that nice and smooth. So the edges of these are all inked as well. The only other thing that I've done is I have, I hope you can see that, I've just randomly, with a background stamp, gone all around the edges on both sides, just so that when I place my pattern paper down, just that edge is just a little bit more interesting. Okay, so what we need to think about now is if we want to have any little tags or little pieces of embellishment hanging off the sides before we go ahead and um, put down our pattern paper. Now if you've decided that you're not going to use pattern paper you can just go ahead and start decorating this as it is. But as I said earlier I am using a pattern paper so I have gone ahead, I've got all of that ready. I have got one little tag to the side here and I've just adhered that down with a little bit of double sided tape. Okay, so that when we pop our patterned piece on, that will be secured underneath there. Okay, so the other thing I've done when I've got these other pieces ready is if I'm going to be using like any brads or anything like that, we need to do that now so that we can flatten them out and have them all totally covered up once it's all laid down. We don't want the brad to be going through this piece here. So I'll just run through just quickly what I've done with my little pieces. So I've got a little brad here and what I've done is I've opened that right up. I've put a jump ring through the legs of that little um, little pin and then I've just secured it at the back. So that gives me a nice little hanging ring there that I can just attach whatever I might like on there. So I've got a couple of little tags on there. I've done some stamping. This one here I've just adhered a little piece of ribbon with a key hanging off it. Okay, so when the book is together we can have that down or we can have them hanging out. Whatever you like. This one here I've just got a little stamp I've um, popped on it here. Always remember if you smile the world smiles back. And then I've got this little um, dragonfly embellishment that I will adhere down like so once my paper has been attached. Okay, so here's one of the little pockets we were looking at. Gone ahead, I've made a little tag out of some of the patterned paper. And that just fits down in there like so. I've got a brad on each of the, the sides here and another one of those little jumpering things that I do. Just got a little tag that I've stamped both sides so it doesn't matter if it hangs out or wherever it goes it's it's got a little sediment on it okay so that's that one the other one I've done a little die cut with love on it got this little embellishment little envelope with a love letter in it and I will adhere that down as well Whoop. once the page is attached okay Another one with this little um, tab up the top, 
little hanging key. Once again, that's just adhered on the back with some double-sided tape. Another little pocket. Another one of those hanging pieces that I do with a little love heart hanging from that. Little tag up the top. I do like the little tags on these these books. They're, they're rather cute. I'm not sure that I'm going to use this one here. I'll, I'll just put that to the side for now. And now this one here, what I've done is I've got this little um, tab pull here. And I've pierced a hole through the, the middle of it before I've um, glued it together. And ran a piece of ribbon up through the middle of it. And just I've just got a little tag tied to the top of that. So that one will definitely hang out of the book like this little love tag down here does. Just got a little um, cog wheel there. And that's just mounted up on another little piece of um, coordinating paper. This one's quite plain because we do need some room for photos in this thing. Um, just another little stamp. I've just stamped it out, cut it out. Joy. Same thing, I've just attached some ribbon to the top half of that um, little tab there. And the last one, it's still drying. I've just got a little paper clip here done a little stamp on a coordinating paper and that's only glued down a portion of the way so that we'll be able to slip a little photo or a little note or something in there onto that page. Okay so let's get started. We'll start putting some of these together. As I said if you do want any of your little tags to hang out the side go ahead and do those now and then we will start layering our paper up. Okay, so I'm just deciding what is the front. Just close this up for a moment because I want to know what's the case. So that's the front. Okay, so I'm right to go. I know what's facing where now. So I'm going to go ahead. I've already um, put tape on the back of these and it's already um, been scored down. So I'll just go ahead and remove the tape. Now, too, if we have got a cover on, on our little um, album like I have with this one here, we've got the inside here that we can um, embellish and put some photos on as well. So on to the next one. So, you know, it goes together quite quickly. Once you've assembled all your little pages with all your little um, embellishments and brads, it's, it's just a matter of adhering it all down. And, you know, it's amazing how different they all look with the different themes and the different um, paper lines that you get. They all are very, uh, very unique. Okay. So it's really starting to come together now, isn't it? It's looking lovely. And at this point I don't put too much embellishment um, on it, I, I, I do so much. And then I wait until I've got the photos that I want to use in the album and then I can go ahead and see what space I have left to, um, to pop more embellishments on there if, if I'm wanting to. So we don't, just don't want to use up all the space so that we can't fit any photos in here. Great little gift, wouldn't they? Like for a birthday or a 
um, graduation or something like that, you could uh, make the album to the theme and give it to the recipient and let them fill it up with um, their memorabilia. So there we go, we've got that side all done. So what we'll do is we'll do the other side and glue down all of our little metal embellishments that we're going to be using. So I'll go ahead and do that and um, then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so we're back. We've got all our pattern paper adhered down. We've got our little metal embellishments um, all glued down as well. So let's take a little look at what this little album looks like. I do love all these little dangly bits. So cute. So there we have our little flip style mini. Hope you've enjoyed making this with me guys. I've, I've certainly enjoyed um, sharing it with you. And I'd love to hear some comments, see what you think. So let's just bring over the little altered box that it, it's going to, to live in. And as you can, uh, you remember me saying I, I had this die cut that I was going to pop on the top here. And I've just kept the little negative pieces from that and I've glued those on around the outside. I've added a little bit of bling, a little key hanging from some chain here, some flowers. And there we go. So we'll pop our little album in there, just like so. And there we have it. Lots of fun. And this is what the little blue one um, ended up looking like. I've just ran some um, lace around that um, uh, area there, just where the, the paint, well, just where we started the paper. I've just ran some um, hot glue around there and attached the lace. I've got some bling hanging off this little handle here. A couple of little, little pieces there. I've, I've just um, used a claw clasp there and attached them like so. Got memories here, journey, little die cut, some flowers, and just in between those flowers I've, I've um, glued some, some bling, just so you just get a, 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 just a glimpse of that there. So as you can see, very, very different styles. Same box, same technique, just very different um, styles. And let me just bring in the original. So you can see they're all very different. Okay. Thanks everyone for joining me. And um, look, please leave a comment and let me know what you thought of this project. And um, I will be seeing you very soon with some more creative ideas. And don't forget to subscribe. Okay, thanks for joining me guys. Bye now.